there my beautiful children. In this video, we're gonna talk about string slicing. What is string slicing? We're not talking about cake slicing, so let's get started. Well, a string, as you remember, was that thing in the green here, but that's just really specific to the idle that we're using. If you're using any other text editor, it's not necessarily gonna be green. So the string is just something in quotes, either it's single quotes or double quotes, as long as it's consistent. Can't have a single quote ending with a double quote. They gotta match, okay? So we have to match with the quotes, that's your string, right? So what we want to do now is slice those strings. Well, what does that mean? Imagine I gave you an email address. Email is equal to, I don't know, rafe at gmail.com, something like that. Well, a common thing that people have to do when they are getting this data back is, well, this is the username or something. This part is the Gmail thing. And then this is the .com part, right? So like, let's say we just want the domain or whatever. And here we simply want like the username. So how would we do that? Well, we can use a little bit of string slicing. So let's just start with a simple example. Let's take hello and let's say we want to get the first letter from hello. We wanna get just the H. Well, how you do it is you index by opening a bracket and closing a square bracket. And if I do zero, it'll get me the first letter of that, okay? so. H in this case is zero, right? The E is one. In Python, most of the things start from zero. So we go all the way up to this O here, which is a four, okay? So we take this hello and, whoops, let's take this hello and let's simply do a one and that'll give me the E, okay? Now, another thing I wanna show you guys in string slicing, besides doing, okay, that index, right? This passing in the index one will give me the second letter. What if we wanna do something cooler, like get a chunk of code? Well, how indexing works is it's start, colon, stop. Okay, colon, stop. So what you can do is you can say, hello. Oh, I keep doing that hello, and you can say start from zero and end at two. Not including two, but end at two. So include zero, but don't include the two, which means that you really get the zeroth, um, zeroth index and the first index, right? So whatever the letter is at the zeroth index and then whatever the letter is at the first index. So in this case, we'll get an HE, okay? How you can read this is just give me the first two letters. That's how I read it. So you can just say, give me the first two letters. Now, when you're starting off from zero, by default, index starts at zero. So if you actually don't say this at all and you just remove the zero, you're gonna get back H-E, okay? Everything that I'm showing you guys here, play around with it, okay? Don't just sit here and watch my videos. I don't want you to be a passive learner, please please actively do this with me or pause my video and do this. I want you to spend more time doing and less time looking at it, okay? Because it seems really simple when you're watching it, but if you don't put into action and do things that make sense to you, if you don't turn it like into a game for yourself where you're doing something, you know, like making fun little stupid projects using what I'm showing you, uh, it, you're not gonna be able to remember it. That's really what my problem with Code Academy is. A lot of people go through Code Academy, but the problem that ends up happening is that they just go through it at a really fast pace and they don't really have much projects that they get to do there and not a lot of stuff that they get to do on their own. So the most common complaint you hear from people who take the Code Academy course, like, it was great, I took the whole thing, but yeah, right now I can't line, write a single line of code. Okay, so it's not impressive the higher you are in really abstract levels, introduction to classes. Oh yeah, I know all about functions. I'm in introduction to classes. Write a function. 
write a function that takes in three inputs and does da da da, prints something out in sorted order. I don't know how to do that. I'm totally lost, right? Don't be one of those people. Make sure you build strong fundamentals and your coding level is functional at all times, right? So even if I'm teaching you really basic stuff, make sure you can do something with it. That's the only way you'll get better and make sure you have fun while you're doing it. Anyways, let's get back to it. So, hello, right? Uh, make up your own strings and break them up and see what you can make up from what I've just shown you here and experiment. What if I change the end? Uh, what if I change the stop part of it? And what if I change the start part of it? What if I don't put anything in the stop part? What happens? So let's try that. So hello, and let's put in nothing for both parts. Let's see what happens. You just get the whole string. It By default, it starts from zero, and by default, it ends at the last um, index. Okay, so it's the same thing as saying zero to, if you count it up, zero, one, two, three, four, right? O is four, so I'll say four here. That will not give me it. I have to say five, right? Because it will not include the four. If I say four, it'll go up to, but won't include the four. For example, see? So we have to do five, okay? So that helps us get to the end of the string. Now, what if I wanna get the last letter from hello? or anything. If I want to get the last letter, I can do something like this. Negative. Okay, I can also slice by a negative number. So if I want to get hell from hello, I can do hello. And I can say, go from zero. And let's try and see what happens if I put negative one here. <laughs> right? So another way I uh, basically what I'm saying is start from the zeroth part, go up to the last part, but not including the last part. So that gave me hell. Um, another way to write it is by putting a four here. Okay. Another way to write it is not having a zero here. Another way to write this is not having a zero here. That all gives you hell. So you see, play around with all those I'm gonna now show you another thing that you can slice with, and that'll also blow your mind. Uh, slicing is very important. It ha it's a very common procedure, so it's pretty good to learn it because, like, let's say you were trying to make an app um, which goes on Craigslist and pulls a lot of data from Craigslist, so it'll like pull up ads. So the ad, like, you might get the data back in a string form. So you might get something like Xbox 360. Uh, pricing is uh, its price is ten dollars and or <laughs> that's stupid it's not ten dollars right you might you might get it for a hundred and fifty dollars nowadays it's 2016 so the value of it has significantly dropped and then let's say it says uh, the condition type so the condition type is new right so this is the data that you get from Craigslist well, if you were writing a script or Python code that would pull that information and then make sense out of it for you and like write it to an actual Excel file. So like you want it to, you know, essentially uh, do something cool where it opens up Excel and writes to it and you want it to like have, you know, product price and condition, right? And in product, you want Xbox 360. In price, you want 150. And in condition, you want new, right? How would you pull that data cleanly so it doesn't put Xbox 360, 150, new, all in one place, right? So for that, you need to be able to do string slicing. Okay, so for instance, you might say uh, console or product, right? Or columns of product is equal to, you know, find me the first pipe, right? So like, let's say we have uh, this guy here. There, there is a method you can do on data, which is called index. 
So let's find the index of pipe. It tells me that pipe is at index nine. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Which means that if I index the string data and I do nine, it'll give me back the pipe. So what that tells me is that to get Xbox 360, I need to go from the start of that string all the way up to the first pipe. That should get me the product. So I can say product is equal to data from the start. I don't need to say zero, right? I can say from the start to uh, take the data dot index of the pipe. And now if I show you product, boom, look at that. We got Xbox 360. And so now I can write that product to the file. I'll teach you guys how to read and write to files. Okay, so then what it will do is that it will actually write Xbox 360 in here for you automatically. Now, understand the power and implications. Well, why can't I just do that by hand, right? That might be your question. What if it was 100,000 products? Can't do it by hand. Good luck, right? What if it was a million products that you were trying to search from and find the best price using your Craigslist bot? That's where programming comes in, okay? It's very important to understand how programming in here ties together and how it's more powerful than you trying to do this on your own. So that's really the power of string slicing, okay? To break this line down for you a little bit more, data colon, that's just saying start from zero, and then I'm saying data.index of pipe. What does that part evaluate to, right? dot index is a method that you can use on data that's okay uh, which just gives you something that you're looking for you pass it into the function right that function or that method index takes in one argument so what does this whole part evaluate to in our case this part evaluates to a nine right this whole part data dot index right it evaluates to a nine so if i do data zero through nine you can see that I just get Xbox 360 the same way. Nine tells me up to, but not including the pipe, okay? So that's how we, we got the Xbox 360 part. How would you get the 150? You would kind of do the same way to get the price, okay? But you would say, instead of starting to look from here, because then it'll find this pipe right here, right, this one, you wanna find this pipe now. So you want to actually start your string search from this location or this location that I'm highlighting. And then you wanna search all the way up to this pipe and stop there and get whatever is in between these two pipes, okay? So that's something that I want you guys to try. Paste your code below for how you might get um, the price and the condition. Okay, that would be a fun thing for you guys to do. Uh, I'm gonna keep moving on and talk a little bit more about strings and uh, string slicing because there's still a little bit more to it. So, um, and again, I want you to keep practicing all this, right? Because otherwise this is gonna over, overwhelm you all this knowledge. So let's say that I have, uh, <clears throat> I can do start, stop, and here's another method to blow your mind, step. So how many steps do I wanna take when I'm reading something, okay? So like, let's say uh, I have this string, hi, how are you doing? It is very nice to meet you. I wanna make sure I'm consistent, so not double quote, single quote, and um, you know, let's just store that in some variable greeting, okay? So if I say greeting, you can see that whole string. So what I can do is take greeting, say start at zero, um, stop at, I don't know, negative one, so like all the way at the end, and then I want you to, um, basically it'll, it'll go up to O, right? Because it's up to, like, or sorry, it'll go up to the U part, but not this period right here. Sorry, I just, <laughs> it, it won't let me highlight that period. 
it, it won't go up to that period, okay? It'll go up to you because it's up to but not including the period. Sorry, I keep saying that a lot, but I do know that when you're starting to learn Python or programming, those things you, you'll forget a lot. So I'm sorry if I'm reiterating that fact over and over again. All right, so we start from zero, we go up to the U, right? We go from here all the way to here, and then we wanna step. So instead of, um, for example, taking, I don't know, reading every single one of these, we can read every other letter. So I can say, instead of stepping by one, which is default, if I, if I do one here, you'll see this pretty much the same string without the period. And if I do uh, nothing here, you'll see the same thing, right? Because that's the default. And um, if I do step by two, this is basically saying give me every other letter. Okay? So think about maybe creating a game, gibberish game, that takes in a string as in a, like it's a function called gibberish takes in a string and it just gibber gibberish eyes it okay it just like jumbles it up um, and if I do three here you can see now it's stepping by three all right so pretty weird but it's also cool at the same time and another thing that I want to ask you guys as a practice to do before I end this video is say I had the string hello. I gave you the string. How would you reverse it? Okay. I want, if I gave you hello, I want back ole. Or if I gave you ole, you should give me back hello. Okay. So hopefully that blew up your mind on string slicing i'll try to put some exercises on cleverprogrammer.com so if you haven't already go enroll into the school and there will be exercises and extra resources that you can use to get help also there are others in the community who can help you okay so good place to go for help but if you're watching it on youtube that's totally fine comment in the youtube section below and I will personally try to help you out. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video.